I'm going to speak a little bit about this kind of model of education for the simple fact that for about 15 years I worked with one of these schools called Lyon uh, Institute of Higher Education in Switzerland. And um, this gave me the chance to live there since 1990. And uh, I'm the best combination ever, Romanian with a Swiss passport. Swiss passport. Um, I think the importance is not necessarily, again, the Swiss schools, but the model of, of education, which uh, in our case in Romania is still a little bit unknown or um, I would say far from being implemented. Um, who is active in education among you? I know one because we just spoke about it before. Is there anybody else involved as trainers or professors or students or okay? Now, um, when I came back to Romania six years ago, I came to put in place a hospitality management school. It was an existing school, but it was mainly a vocational school. Uh, usually in Romania, when we speak about education in hospitality, we say education in tourism. And then we have all these universities, wonderful universities, with wonderful kids. Okay. Um, dealing with the theory, dealing with uh, most of the part of uh, agencies and the fear of tourism. I'm a hotelier, in fact, and uh, what I think we, we dreadfully need is people working in hotels with one single and strong set, which is the attitude. This is my personal belief. If you have the right attitude in these professions, then you can build upon it the technicity. Now, can a school develop an attitude? I think that an attitude, you have to have it. You have people made to be accountants, nothing wrong with accounting. You have people for the front desk, you have people and so on. But the school can eventually stimulate certain, certain talents. And I think that one of these models that we, again, don't think necessarily about Switzerland. Switzerland is maybe one of the leading uh, countries in, 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 this, in this field, but I think that the winning model that they managed to do, and I don't know why we don't manage to do so, and if you remember, as Van was mentioning before, you know, education is very important, but everybody's mentioning this. But once you get to that point and say, let's pay for it, let's invest money into education, then there's a big step backwards. So I think that the winning model in our, in our professions, and whoever can say different, I would be happy to learn from, uh, is the perfect combination between theory and practice. Okay? We have, or we are in hands-on professions. We don't deal with theories. And then nobody will ever teach you what do you do with a dead person in a hotel. So to give this strong example, but it's something that you learn on the field. And the fact that uh, they managed to have this, this alternative between theory and practice, I think is a winning model. What we don't manage to do in Romania is to have more than this three weeks stage internships. Uh, where in general, uh, the employer is not very, very happy with it because it's much too short. So they would say, why should I invest in somebody who leaves after three weeks? So what, what basically happens is that they sign a piece of paper and say, no way. Uh, what could we do? I mean, in my opinion, one of the, I would say, the, the points we should, should have also with the young school and with the, with the senior school is this, this educational uh, project. Obviously, school cannot necessarily become um, an educational institution, even though I have the feeling, Marianne, that there is something within school international regarding education. What we did last year, for example, um, we managed to go to Brand, where people will go tomorrow. Um, and we had a kind of, uh, of uh, team building, if you want, you know. But again, it was not a structure, structured school. We're fighting with, with authorities for ages now to make them understand that hospitality has become science. It is not necessarily, or it's not enough any longer to make the source of the Chamel, which is very important. But when you have to deal with hundreds of groups, and when you have to deal with huge investments, 
you need finance, you need marketing, you need human resources. It is a university level um, needed, which we do not have today. Bulgaria has it, if I'm not wrong, if our Bulgarian friend is still around. Okay. We don't speak about the Western countries because they all have it, this kind of system, this kind of university of applied sciences, we call this today. And unfortunately, we don't manage to do it so. So uh, one of our uh, future uh, plans within school is to, to really become a, uh, an engine, if I may say so, uh, in terms of lobbying. We managed, I didn't say it now, but I'm going to say it later on to, in, in the evening. Um, I was telling Marianne before, we managed to become the founding members for the very first time of the Association for Development and Promotion of Tourism in Bucharest, uh, which is recognizing, I would say, the importance of such an organization. So through our members, we're really trying to, to implement and to push a little bit authorities to move in the right direction. And education is really the most, most important thing. Everybody on a political level is, is sustaining this. But then once we have to implement something, I always said that the key performance indicator of a school is the employability of the students. So a school is as good as their students are afterwards. But then it comes this huge role of the employers to play the game and to take these kids from the schools and give them a, I would say, a future plan. I don't speak about money. Very often in Romania we speak uh, about money, about very low salaries, but I think that more important than these low salaries are a career structure and a career view for the future. And this, again, the title is with the Swiss, but this is something which happens in the schools, and you, most, of part, most part of you know this very well. Um, they manage to organize careers. No school can guarantee a job, but the school should organize this meeting between the offer and the demand and should guarantee that you have the most chances okay, to, to, join, uh, to join the industry. I think our Italian friend wanted to say something for a while, he was jumping with the hand and on, but you know, can I say a joke? Yeah. But you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. So I, I must say before that my wife is Italian. So whatever I say about Italians, I'm like an Italian, so you know. <laughs> so, you know, he was rising up his hand and so on. You know, <laughs> you know what this is? So, yeah. No, no, wait, wait a sec, wait a sec. You know this? This is a dead Italian. Because if he was, no, because if he was alive, he would be like this. <laughs> Please. Okay, uh, thank you for this opportunity. I'm Robert Nietzsche, I'm a member of the Global Italian Hotel Owner Association. And my suggestion, because in Italy we have got a big problem. Uh, we have got a lot of young people that study in the, uh, in the school and in the university. But my suggestion is that if you want a successful career in the hotel industry, you have to accept to an entry level when you finish your school. Because if, if you go to school, you, you cannot have a general manager position. Absolutely. Okay. So Absolutely. You can have a strong degree or an university degree, but you have to accept an entry level position. And in the future, you can have this chance or this possibility mm. if you have got a good, a good university and a good, a good school in your background, but not for the first position. Absolutely. Very, very important. But then there is this problem in the eyes of people. Do you know how much a Swiss school costs for three, three and a half years for a bachelor's degree program? Lausanne is four years, Grion and La Roche are three and a half. 20, how much? 20,000. 20, 20 for the whole program? So who gives more, who gives less? When I used to promote the Swiss, when I was, when I used to promote the Swiss schools, we went on the military bases in Frankfurt, you know, our fellow Americans, you know. And when we're saying the price, you know, we're just saying, ooh, ooh. No, we speak about around 30,000 euros per semester. Okay? So, if you think that 
let's say you have this, as I said, this alternance between the theory uh, internship and so on. So you just pay the, the theory part, okay? So let's say the first year is just half of it you pay, so you pay 30. But then the year after, when you come back from your internship, you have two academic semesters, so you have 60. And so on. So you have to consider about 150,000 euros in three years or three years and a half. This is a lot of money. So once parents or kids and so are prepared to pay such a price, in their minds, expectations are very high. I think one of the best systems of, of internship systems uh, we have is the American system with the management trainings. Okay? I think the Scandinavian countries do have it like this. It's, it's hard to find it in Europe. But well, whatever school you may finish, if you go to America, they'll put you in an 18-month program where you start from the scratch with everything. And this is where you really learn. And you can apply, obviously, what you learn in school. But again, uh, this is very correct what you say. But on one hand, you have the marketing of the schools and the cost, 150,000 euros, a lot of money. And then the guy comes and says, and my son is now at the reception. And uh, in Romania, they might make maybe 250. Okay, in Switzerland, they might make 3,000 3, francs. Okay, which, which, if you put in balance with the cost of living and so on, it's not a big deal. Um, I think this is a real problem. I think this is a real problem. Because people going out of these schools, and uh, again, we have the same thing. We had a, a program here developed with Lausanne, a postgraduate program. And um, the, the main problem we had once these people finished was that their expectations of career, of salary, were obviously increasing. They were expecting to have something more. Mm -mm. No. On the other hand, employers willing to pay eventually for their employees would say, why should I pay for my employee? Next day he's going to ask me for a higher salary or eventually he will leave. And this, this brought us in a situation where we have in Romania a couple of hundreds, if not thousands, of vocational schools delivering papers. They're paper printers. We are fighting, for example, for a German system where the representatives of the professions, the Hotel Fachverein or Vasima das Heist, no? the, the Association of Hoteliers, are members within the examination commissions. And then they say, this school yes, this school no. Because otherwise you can't make any difference. But what happens is that, again, if you think that you pay 150 in three years and a half, obviously you'll think of a return on investment. Okay. Uh, how many people do you think, I speak only about the Swiss now, how many people out of Lausanne, you all know about Lausanne, you heard about Lausanne. You know Le Roche, in, we have the branch in Spain, we have Guillaume, we had a branch in, in uh, also in, um, in Corfu in, uh, in Greece. Le Roche developed another branch school uh, with the Jinjiang group in, uh, in Shanghai. Okay. Uh, how many people, they, they produce in brackets thousands of, of uh, bachelor's degrees a year. How many people do you think? Grillon has 53 years. Lausanne has about 110. Cornell, I have no idea. But would be there. Okay, Le Roche, another 50. So in all these years, how many people do you think they stay within these professions, percentage-wise? It out. Congratulations. 50 is a good number. We don't even manage to have 50% of the people remaining in these professions, which is a loss for the industry, which is not necessarily a loss for the school because this shows that they can adapt themselves in any kind of other activity. But again, why should you pay 150,000 and then to quit after three, four years? Because we should admit that our professions are first of all professions of passion. It needs passion, it needs time. Family life is not the easiest way to have once you're in the hotel business. Okay? So usually people are staying in this business between two and five years after they graduate. Okay? And then they quit. 
what they try to change. Those being able to, to, to stay longer, we have now GMs after eight, nine years of nice properties, I would say. And obviously, people having the chance and the will to go as far as possible have much more chances to, to develop and to improve their, their skills than, um, don't get me wrong, but staying in Europe. Europe is quite close, and uh, I, say, I tell this always to, to my Romanian fellows, uh, don't be afraid of going to China, don't be afraid to go to Asia. Probably, probably, uh, we will never manage to have the same services Asia is offering today. In terms of smiling, in terms of professionalism, in terms of... It's very hard, very hard. Uh, why not try at least once in life, when you're young, Dubai? It is impressive. Okay. It is impressive. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's it about, you know, I mean, so Swiss, Swiss schools uh, have the reputation and for sure that there is something very solid behind. But uh, I have my, my, I don't know how you see that from the professional side, uh, I have this, this uh, huge question um, if the balance between the price you pay and what happens afterwards does not create a certain, uh, a certain disadvantage. You have very good schools in Germany, you have them in Belgium, you have the, uh, the Hague in, in, in Holland, okay. Um, the Swiss white cross on the red carpet there, you know, stay the kind of uh, non plus ultra. And uh, I think that it is what is maybe more interesting than in other places is the international side. Okay, as I, as I was saying today, I think that we also learn ex cathedra out of this communication with probably around 100 nationalities. What I really enjoyed, I, I, I studied there in the early 90s, and then I managed the school until 2004. Uh, what I really enjoyed and what I really, what can I say, my, my, my daughter is eight, my, my boy is three and a half, I just hope that there will be no schools until they get to school time, I'm joking. But uh, what I like is that um, living together, you know, even if it's at the university level, gives you that unique experience of sharing things. Okay? In my time, okay, you couldn't share a room with the same nationality, which I found extraordinary. And you all know that the hotel business is global. The guy who was supposed to come and present the Swiss schools today okay, comes from Azerbaijan. But Romanians didn't give him a visa, so tough luck, okay? But globalization, so you have a Romanian now explaining about Swiss schools. Uh, but I really believe in this, in this globalization, and I think that slowly, even in Romania, things will, will get to this point. We don't really find uh, multinational workers in our hotels, okay? But probably slowly, slowly, things will, will happen. Uh, we're trying also to convince young scholars or not, but young students from, from, from uh, international schools to join Romanian hotel chains, I mean, well, international hotel chains in Romania, for example, that uh, even you came eventually as a tourist, but I'm sure that you will leave as a friend. So once people are coming in, they see it with other eyes, and this will help us also to, you know, integrate them and feel ourselves integrated within the larger outside world.